third well now contains no glycerol, only the sucrose. The timer is set once again for an additional six minutes. Once the timer goes off the final time, we need to move the embryo from well number three into well number four. Number four is the final wash where the embryo would then be loaded into the straw for transfer. The transfer procedure would use a quarter cc straw. The straw needs to be identified with the particular embryo that we're going to transfer today. The quarter cc straw is then attached onto the one cc tuberculin syringe at the cotton plug end. The tip of the straw is placed into the solution and a small amount is drawn up into the syringe. We then take a small air pocket, reach down into the solution and draw the embryo in a larger band of fluid. Then another small air pocket and a very small band of fluid on the very end. Once we have this complete, the solution is drawn up until it activates the cotton plug and seals the straw. Now the straw is ready for transfer. We can place it back in the sterile bag for storage. the cervix itself. So as we transfer through the vulva and the vagina, this will keep us from contaminating the sterile portion of the gun. For the recipient, we need to use an epidural anesthesia. This is an anthocaine injection of 2%. We will use approximately 5 cc's per recipient. This will act to prevent rectal contractions and relaxes the reproductive tract. Each recipient also needs to receive the epidural anesthesia. Once again, we will give five cc's of the anthocaine solution. The epidural takes effect quite rapidly. The vulva and perineal region is then washed off, wiped with a paper towel, and the transfer gun is inserted through the vulva. Since you're using a chemise, it is not necessary to spread the vulva prior to entering with the transfer gun. Once the transfer gun touches the cervix, the plastic chemise is broken, the transfer gun is pushed through it, gently worked through the cervix, Once through the cervix, the gun is slid up into the uterine horn. We normally want to slide it approximately three to four inches into the uterine horn. Once in the uterine horn, the embryo is gently pushed into the horn. The assistant then correctly identifies the recipient with the embryo that it received. The transfer process itself is very rapid and should only take a couple minutes per animal. Now let's review what we have learned. Embryo transfer has several advantages. These include rapid production of large numbers of offspring from valuable females, sufficient numbers of calves for accurate progeny testing of females, propagation of rare breeds, and it provides a more economical way to export animals. The donor cow and sire must have high genetic merit. Their offspring must add to the value of the herd. Even though the recipient cows do not have any genetic effect on the calves, they must be sound, fertile, have good dispositions, and have good milking ability. They will contribute to the calves' weaning weights through their own milking ability. The donor cow is superovulated using synchronized injections of follicle-stimulating hormone. During standing estrus, she is artificially inseminated with two straws of semen. Seven days after estrus, the embryos are collected. Embryos are evaluated for viability. 
Acceptable embryos are then frozen in liquid nitrogen for storage or shipping. Prior to transfer, the frozen embryos are thawed and rehydrated in a four-step thawing process. The embryos are then transferred to the recipient females for gestation and parturition. Embryo transfer is a very useful procedure that can increase performance and profitability of superior cattle. Progressive cattle breeders should consider this procedure an option when designing new management practices to increase the performance of their herds.